Hello, everybody. I thought I'd take a moment off from developing this system and uh, talk about some of the stuff that used to be pro and is now free, so you should use it. One of the big ones is image post-processing. Uh, they don't call it image post-processing anymore. They now call it effects. Um, I think that's overly vague, but whatever. You can get your effects package right here. You just say import package effects. This actually includes a wide variety of effects, not just the post-processing effects that I've used in the past. But uh, you can play around with this all you'd like. I'm just going to take you on a very, very short tour of the post-processing effect. So if we go down into Standard Assets, Effects, Image Effects, Scripts, you can see that we've got all of these scripts here, right? And this is a lot of scripts that you might want to use in your game. It used to be a mix of C Sharp uh, and JavaScript, now it's all C Sharp, which is good for me, but maybe not good for some of you out there who might rely more on JavaScript. Still, all of these effects can be used uh, just arbitrarily, and you can stack them too. So if we highlight our main camera here, let's just drag it to the bottom so we can see it, we can drop any of these scripts onto the camera and get a post-processing event. Let's see what that does, shall we? So if we hit play, we can see that it's very blurry now. We drop this back down. You can see it's only modestly blurry now. So that's what a post-processing effect is. One of the things you may have noticed, it does not affect the UI. If you wanted to post-process your UI, you'd have to do something slightly different. We're not going to go into that. One of the things to remember is that you can actually stack these uh, arbitrarily deep. So you can have a blur, and then you can have a uh, bloom, and you can have some sort of really nasty blur-bloom combo that confuses everyone. Now, order of operation matters. They're executed uh, in the order in which they appear here. So if you wanted to change that order, you could. One of the tricks I used to use a lot was uh, I would turn them on or off or change their parameters in script uh, based on something like acceleration. So if your player changes the speed of time so it passes 10 times faster I'd put a, a bloom effect in and if they moved slower I'd put a sepia tone effect in uh, to show you that I'll remove this blur and I'll put in the sepia tone they've got a sepia tone yeah of course they do that's like that's like typical and if we hit play now we might not actually oh I guess the sepia tone is pretty obvious after all uh, you can actually change the sepia tone shader if this is a little bit too aggressive uh, but you can adjust the uh, the bloom, and you can do that in script. So if your player accelerates or whatever, you could change it so that it changes to look different, more and more different. Now this is important for me because my game takes place on a world where the sun over there somewhere is uh, is constantly on the horizon and it's a deadly threat. So as it slowly, slowly rises over the course of weeks and weeks and weeks, I'll keep turning the bloom up and up and up. I don't need sepia tone for that, though. I just need bloom. So, you know, this is um, this is it when it's cold out, and then as the sun starts to rise, uh, you better move on, because now you're going to melt. So that should be fun, and I recommend that all of you play around with these image effects. Um, obviously, shadows are, are another thing that are now included. Shadows don't work very well with terrain, but they work well with everything else, and uh, you can now do all sorts of you know point light shadows and stuff. Don't go crazy with those though, because uh, they are very expensive. So um, you know, few rather than a lot. Uh, and even then, you might want to turn them off if the player chooses a low, a low level of quality. So that's that, and I hope that you play around with this and find some look you like.